Good morning. Thank you for joining us as we send out another short message from the Baptist Church in Malile. We're outside this morning and it's a beautiful morning. The sun's shining and we have some competition from the birds, but we're glad that we can hear them sing. I'm sure that you've noticed over the course of your lifetime how very often a special and significant moment can be summed up in a simple sentence. I'm thinking of something as significant as the first man who ever put his foot on the moon. And remember those famous words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, uttered by Neil Armstrong, of course. Or I'm thinking even prior to that, the famous commentary on the 1966 World Cup final. Whenever we hear those words time and time again, they think it's all over, it is now. And of course that BBC commentator was trying to grasp in a sentence what was happening. And what was happening was this. It was the final seconds of a World Cup final. England were playing West Germany. England were winning 3-2. The referee was checking his watch. Some of the supporters were making their way towards the pitch. They thought it was all over. And suddenly the ball lands at the foot of Jeff Hurst. And he thumps it. And it's in the back of the West German net. And the commentator at that point could say with complete confidence, it is now. He was no longer just thinking this game was over. He knew for certain that there was no way West Germany could recover from a two goal deficit. It was now 4-2. The game was up. The game was over. But I'm thinking this morning about something far more special and significant than the moon landing or the World Cup final in 1966. I'm thinking about the words of Jesus Christ on the cross because Jesus summed up everything that he did in a very short sentence. Because as Jesus hung on that cross in the final moments of his life, he uttered three words in our language. It is finished. What a wonderful sentence to sum up everything that Christ Jesus had accomplished. You could think about Christ and you can think about the multiple miracles that he performed. You can think about the people that he healed who had leprosy, who were blind, people who were paralyzed. But to think about his greatest work is to think about his work on the cross. And Christ had already prayed, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. He was able to say that in everything the Father had sent him to accomplish, he had accomplished and achieved absolutely everything. The consummation of Christ's life was the cross. And it was through the cross and through what he accomplished on the cross, he was able to say categorically and clearly, it is finished. Isn't that absolutely amazing? when we think about Jesus Christ this morning. But you know, it's not just enough to recognize that Christ's work was finished through the cross. We need to enter into that work if we haven't already done so. We need to recognize that his sacrifice is sufficient to save us from our sin, that he has opened up a new and living way to God that he made one sacrifice for sins forever. And then he sat down at the right hand of the Father. This is the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, whenever those other comments were made about the moon landing and about the World Cup, other people have landed on the moon since. Other World Cups have been won and lost since. But when Jesus said, it is finished, he meant that everything was complete with regard to what we need to be reconciled to God, to have a relationship with God. Everything in that regard is finished. There's no need to work for our salvation. We can't earn it. Christ has finished the work that the Father gave him to do. What we simply need to do now is to enter into it. So let me ask you this morning, have you considered Christ's word from the cross? 
And have you entered into that saving relationship with God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? You see, when John, who was an eyewitness of those events, was able to record that for us, John went on to say later in this gospel, John's gospel, chapter um, 20, verse 31, these things were written, John said, so that you might believe and so that believing you may have life in his name. I trust that you will, if you haven't already, entered into this work that Christ has accomplished on our behalf by faith in him. May God bless you today. Thank you for joining us.